Welcome back to Attacking Third. We are pleased now to be joined by Washington Spirit Defender. I'm just going to keep putting it in quotes. Tara McKeown. Tara, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Congratulations, because you just signed a huge four-year contract extension with the Washington Spirit. So congrats to you. You're staying in D.C. Why was this the right decision for you? Yeah, I definitely, I mean, it's definitely become my second home out here. And with the vision that Michelle has and the new coaching staff and the players around me, I just knew that this was the right fit for me for the next four years. Amazing. Tara, you came in 2021 NWSL draft direct to Washington Spirit, and then you, that season, become their first NWSL championship winning team. If you could go back in time now, knowing all that you have, all of the growth that you've experienced there, what note would you drop yourself prior to that draft? Um, I think I was really nervous going into that draft, like figuring out where I'm going to be and what team I'm going to be on. But I think I just tell myself, like, just to enjoy the moment and it's all going to work out and I'm going to enjoy my career so far. So yeah, just enjoy. Alleviate some of that pressure. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I love it. You know, it's a uh, while to think about your time with the spirit is 2021 because the, the franchise itself has gone through some changes of its own, whether it's been in the ownership side or whether it's, you know, players coming in and out. And with this season, there was a part of that, Free agency got introduced while during your time with with the spirit and this year it brought the arrival of, of Casey Kruger. So I was wondering if you wouldn't mind chatting a little bit about your experiences playing in her first year with the spirit along the back line there. Yeah, it's been great. I honestly think the back line has gelled really well together. We brought in more players and we're able to just be friends on and off the field. Casey is like one of the best people you'll ever meet. And so having her on the team has just been like a light for the back line and the team itself. I also just think that like our chemistry off the field is showing like how well we mesh and combine on the field. So that's a big plus going into the next four years. Tara, I wanted to ask you about bouncing around between so many positions because I was a forward and for some reason coaches freaking love to make forwards outside backs but you've migrated to center back now why do you think that's so common and which one is your actual preferred position yeah I know I, it's crazy I like you I played outside back a lot too in college and like the youth national team growing up but, but never really got thrown into center back from a forward position so I definitely think that was a shock when I was told that I was going to be a center back because I was going into that meeting like thinking they wanted to move me to defense, but I was thinking outside back because that's what usually happens. But I think definitely now in my second year at center back, I'm more comfortable and I really do enjoy that position. I enjoy being on the ball and seeing the field in front of me and just being able to play make from the back. So I think now I'd say I like center back. <laughs> Ooh, Whoa. a hot take. I was yeah. totally expecting something opposite. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's crazy. I didn't think when I first changed, I was like, okay, I kind of miss it up front still. But yeah, second year, I'm really enjoying it back there. It's no wonder because you're very good at it. So that also <laughs> helps to make you an enjoyable position. But going, I mean, why do coaches do that? Like, what are the skills and the technical ability that you had as a forward and still have that translates so well to being a center back? Um, I think one of the big ones was like physicality and 1v1 defending. And then like being able to see the passes like that for like a nine would see to the outside like forwards like breaking lines i think that's a big one you need to have like as a center back is seeing which passes can break lines going forward but put your teammates in a good position to succeed also so i think all of that was what probably threw me back there I don't know. I think you discount it because your long balls are beautiful. Your chance creation, the crosses, the accuracy, you kind of are like a quintessential center back, whether or not you wanted to be, but you're absolutely crushing it in that back line. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, who has been sort of a major chemistry builder in the back line with you? Um, I think this year it's definitely, it's like been 
we had like the same group basically for like the first four, like the first half of the season. So I think we were able to build the chemistry a lot with like on a Gabby, Casey, and when Kate wasn't injured, like her playing back there, everyone was just so open to receiving feedback and wanting to get better that like there wasn't really any like mad that they're playing over me or anything like that. And I think that still stands with the players that we've brought in after the international break. Everyone just wants to get better and wants our team to succeed. So I'm like really excited for Esme to be back here. And she's just a great person on and off the field as well and just brings the more energy to the back line and the spirit. So I think like honestly everyone, I can't have enough good words to say about all of them. Esme Morgan made her NWSL and Washington debut last weekend, and it was a game against Houston in which it, you guys dominated, right? 3-0, congrats on the big win. But before that match, what kind of conversations did you have with Esme about adjusting to the NWSL, going against a Houston side, anything leading into that game? Yeah, I think before the game, the message was to just, like, she's a great player, so just play how she knows she can play and be, like, you don't need to be nervous or anything. It's we were trying to play the football that like she probably came from just passing from the back, breaking lines, beating defenders in the back. So I feel like it wasn't that big of a change for her. I don't know. Maybe she'd say different, but she did amazing and she's still doing amazing like every day. So I think just going forward, it's just working on that chemistry as well. I love that. You've talked a little bit about, um, making those adjustments from being a more attacking player to obviously staying on the back line. And throughout a player's career, conversations that I've had with players when we talk about examples to go off of, maybe role models that they have, they're able to, to point out, you know, especially if they're a striker, like, oh, I, I like to follow this player or I'm a big fan of this player's, uh, you know, ability. For you, having now made this switch at the professional level have you had a time to, to to say like i'm looking at this defender or that defender and i like what they bring to their game or i'm trying to model things after here or looking at so and so as a, a center back example here yeah i mean i think anyone who plays center back is right now looking at naomi gurma and the ability that she's able to create on the ball and the defending that she has so i think that was always one who since I've switched to center back, I've been watching her a lot. And of course, like Becky Sauerbrunn, she's been amazing. And I think it's great to have these players in the league that I can look up to because I'm watching these games to just like put on a Friday night, but I'm also learning as well. So maybe they don't want me to learn from them, but <laughs> while I'm watching, but um, yeah, I think a lot of great center backs are in the league. So it's amazing to just watch and see what I can be better at. Tara, you came into the league at a really interesting time where now there's celebrity owners coming in. Women's soccer is cool. It's like now really on the map. Can you talk about the transformation and what it's been like, especially with an owner like Magic Johnson now investing into the team and showing up at games and really what that's done for the community around the spirit? Yeah, I think it's it's great. And it's not just what like it's done for the community around the spirit. It's like women's soccer as a whole like the amount of people investing and coming out to games and it, believing in women now is just showing the younger generation that there's something to look forward to when you want to be a professional soccer player. And that's actually like an obtainable career and you can like do it and have fun and live like your dream basically is what I am doing. <laughs> God, that's so cool to hear. It, it is really fun. And then to watch Magic Johnson be at the games with Michelle Kang. I mean, Michelle Kang is a very you know, visible public figure. And and, and an icon. Icon, <laughs> yeah. right. She does so much to grow this sport. Um, Washington Spirit Tara has had a very interesting coaching arc this year. A, a lot of times it goes the opposite way. You start with a head coach and then you get an interim because things maybe go sour during the season. That was the opposite. Yeah. This year started with Adrian Gonzalez um, as the, the temporary head coach before Jonathan Giraldez was able to come in. How has that transition been? I mean, like thinking back on it, like you guys had two head coaches this year and you clinched the playoffs earlier than ever in club history. Why? 
I think it was the understanding that this was what was happening. Like there wasn't any like blindsided or like thinking that we were going to keep Adrian as the head coach. Like we knew it was laid out to us what was going to happen and when Jonathan was going to be here. And when Jonah came, we knew like he was the head coach and so did Adrian and he like, I, he's amazing. And he was amazing at head coach. And now being as an assistant coach, it's like even better. He's able to create those relationships with players more. And I feel like have more, like he's more relaxed. I feel like not as stressed as like a head coach, but yeah, I think their chemistry and the whole coaching staff chemistry that we brought in what has just been amazing. And it's like, everyone's understanding going into the situation that this was happening. So there was no like bad blood or anything when changes did occur. That's so good to hear. And clearly it paid off, right? Yeah. Like so well, right. We love good coaches in the NWSL. Um, Tara, I wanted to ask about Ule Sar. I got to play with her in France for a year. We played together at Bordeaux and she is a goofy woman. Love her. Thanks. Uh, you have said that she's the funniest player on the team. Can you give us a story or share why you say that? Um, it's just like, it's just like the way she does really anything. And when we're like coming into meetings and she'll be like the last one trickling in before the time is like up. And as she's like walking in, Jonah's like, how are you today, Ule? And every time, like before she answers, we all know the answer. So it's going to be like tired. <laughs> and every time, and then Jonah like started like answering for her before she would. But yeah, she's just like a great girl. And some people I feel like don't understand with the language barrier, but she yeah. knows pretty good English now. And so more people are trying, like beginning to understand that she's really hilarious. And like, honestly, because of the language barrier, it's like some of the things that she says that maybe wouldn't be funny, but the way she says them in like, mm -hmm. not the right way, it's like pretty funny still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we try to have a little bit of, uh, of fun here. So I love that you're talking about the jokes that Ule makes, uh, but we also try to close out with maybe a non-soccer question from time to time. And we tend to lean towards whether it's coffee orders or music. And in this case, we know you're a big fan of country. So just curious what's on your playlist rotation right now. What, what's the artist that we need to, our, to, to add on to our attacking third playlist? Like give us the cuts. Um, well, actually like a lot of players on the team who don't like country, but like are trying to get into it. Like the Post Malone new album is like a country album mm -hmm. and it's so good. And he has like Luke Combs on Blake Shelton and all these like big country singers that I feel like make I like the songs and I'm a country girl and then some of the girls on the team who aren't country girls <laughs> still like the songs so yeah definitely give him a listen too do you have a oh, cowboy uh, Carter opinion um I like I like her songs but I feel like it's not very much country fair enough you're a country yeah. purist yeah who's your favorite artist um I love Kenny Chesney, Toby Keith, like Luke Combs, Megan Maroney. Yeah. Honestly, anyone, I feel like I would go to any country concert. So Tyler I just, appreciate how, I just appreciate how ready you are for this question. Like there's moments where we get players, oh, hold on, let me get my phone. Let me look, let me scroll. You yeah. came right now. I appreciate that. That's like yeah. all I listen to. So I feel like <laughs> I know it all well. Well, we're adding it to our attacking third playlist, Tara. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So much and congratulations on your contract extension making the playoffs and good luck this weekend and the rest of the season with washington thank you guys thanks for having me